Good afternoon, everyone. Hi, good afternoon. Good afternoon, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mr. Diola. Good afternoon, Benga. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Mrs. Adeyemi. Good afternoon, You've everyone. Me out again. We appreciate seeing you again, sir. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Yes. So good afternoon, everyone that is watching us. Um, I just want to confirm with the FATE team that we're live. Fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you. So my name is Adenike Adiemi. I am the Executive Director for FATE Foundation. And you're all welcome to our first live question and answer edition for our Journeys in Entrepreneurship series. Journeys in Entrepreneurship is a podcast and video series we launched today, 12 p.m. today actually, which showcases the stories and journeys of Nigerian entrepreneurs who have and who are building successful businesses across the country. The format we have chosen to adapt is to explore each of these different stories through the eyes of one entrepreneur interviewing another within the same field. When we started this project, there was none other that we knew that we wanted for our first episode than Mr. Fola Adiola, chairman at Faith Foundation, who is also the founder and pioneer managing director and chief executive officer of Guarantee Trust Bank. We reached out to Benga Adiola, the co-founder and chief executive officer of Flutterwave, to ask if he would host this conversation, and he said yes right away. We were very excited. We recorded this episode late January in 2020. But as you all know now, the world we live in right now is very different, much different from the world we are in now in a lot of respects. And so given this context, we initially delayed the airing of our recorded episode until this month, but thought that it was also important to contextualize the stories of the entrepreneurial journeys within the world that we live in. So we now added the question and answer segment to it, which we did not have before. So we're glad to welcome everyone. Uh, we're currently having this conversation on Zoom, but we know that the live chat is going on at the moment and I can see that a couple of you are already watching us now. So without much ado, and on that note, I'm going to formally welcome to this interactive question and answer session, the chairman of Faith Foundation, Mr. Fola Adiola. You're welcome, sir. And- Good afternoon. Good afternoon and Mr. Benga Agwala, the co-founder and chief executive officer for Flutterwave. So I'll be asking, I'll start off by asking a few questions. We also have a few questions that have also started to come in um, and then we'll take the questions at, as they go. So we expect that it will be a very lively chat that will, and we'll finish um, exactly at four on the dot. So, um, I'll start, I'll, I'll, I'll direct this question to both to Mr. Diola and to Benga Wola. Um, and the question that I want to start with is um, what, of looking at the last two to three months, so between the end of March till now, um, probably even much earlier, um, what are your reflections um, in the light of the crisis and in the light of the pandemic? What, what are your personal reflections um, of, of the situation at, at hand, how has it changed your view of the world as a person individually, if it has, if, if there's any change that it has. So if you can please share with us your reflections and how, how the crisis has changed or is, or maybe is shaping your view of, of the world. Starting with you, sir, Mr. Diola. Okay, I was just going to suggest a ground rule that when okay. a question is addressed to myself yes. and, um, uh, Benga, Benga should um, lead and okay. answer first. That's Thank fine. you. So Benga. So Benga, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> Let me start by saying thanks for the opportunity to be here again um, with Mr. Diola. Great to see you, sir. And also Nike, great to see you as well. It's great to um, see you. From my perspective, right, um, you know, in the past couple of months, it's been very interesting, um, mm -hmm. especially because no one could have planned for the pandemic. Um, you know, every projection, every plan we had for 2020 basically had to be revised in view mm -hmm. of, of COVID, right? However, what I have seen from my perspective has been um, the need to what I call over-communicate 
right? Okay. Um, um, you know, leading a team where everybody's now remote, where we've been remote since March um, till now. And, you know, we still have to serve our clients. We still have mm -hmm. to provide the best service that we can provide. Mm -hmm. uh, so that basically um, created for me what I call a new way to lead, um, which is basically um, be more empathetic in the way we lead and also be, be able to communicate more with the team. Mm -hmm. uh, what, 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 a, a couple of measures that we've tried to adopt after the wave has been to continuously just um, let people know where things are, you know, mm -hmm. have more meetings, have more um, detailed um, conversations about everything that we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. I'm very open with the team, right? Um, I have been very open with the team to understand where we're going, what is happening, what is going on, and how we're trying to basically react um, and stay afloat as a company. But it's been great. Um, mm. The biggest secret of Florida Wave is our people. We've got the best people mm. ever. And we've all come together at this time to ensure that we continue to give our clients the best service. Mm. And yet, in the midst of that pandemic, we built a new product that was addressed specifically to a small merchant who were, were probably affected by, the, by, by COVID, right? Mm. That you know, now they can sell online we follow a store um, at zero cost compared to um, when they were all offline and customers come to their stores. Now with COVID happening, they can use that store to sell online. And it's, it's grown massively. In the last couple of weeks, we've had almost 3,000 merchants sign up to use that platform to sell more. So we've seen what we call um, the opportunity in um, COVID the because mm -hmm. yeah, there's been a massive acceleration of digital adoption across mm -hmm. board and that has been really fantastic. So for me, the, the, the biggest one is just communication, right? Okay. So um, thank thank you for that. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So thank you for that. So communication, I like what you said around emotional intelligence and empathy, um, speaking and relating and over communicating even to a point to your, to your, to your team primarily but to your customers, and we'll speak. We'll we'll go into a bit more detail around even how you've adapted that, and even some of your remote working strategies. Uh, but I'd like to go to you, Mr. Deola, to please also answer that question. Okay, um, thank you, and thank you, Benga, and well done. Mm. What comes to mind immediately is that adversity mm. tends to bring human beings together. Mm. You know, the fear of death, the fear of catching a disease. And um, in the community I live in Lagos, everybody seems to be guided by this, these challenges and what can we do? And there's been a lot of cooperation. People have been generous uh, uh, with opening their wallets and um, helping their neighbors. I think that's positive. Um, lockdown itself has its frustrations. Uh, you are in this a defined space. What do you do? Uh, some have gone on a journey of uh, uh, self-discovery, mm -hmm. introspection. I find myself doing more, uh, far more than I was doing when, I'm, when I was going out to work because you're at home and you forget that you are working. So there are appointments that you take at for 10 p.m., Somebody's going to call you from uh, New York and you yeah. take it, uh, forgetting that you have a family that you need that need your attention as well. But there's also the positive, uh, getting closer to family, um, yes, and getting on each other's, on, on one another's nerves as well, yeah, yeah. Uh, balancing both. Um, it's frustrating to be told that I belong to the vulnerable category. And um, that makes me feel like all of a sudden, a very old man, which I don't think I feel, uh, but it's okay. That is the category I belong to. The question I sent out at the beginning of this exercise to people that followed me on Twitter was what will be the one thing, just one, yes. that you'll be able to show for this time that you've been locked uh, down in, in your space. And I, I started that journey myself. Mm -hmm. What I find is that I'm, I'm able to show um, mm -hmm. not one, not two, not three, not four. And as, as I complete one particular assignment, I find myself going into another one. 
there were endeavors that I started that I thought was one 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 off one time and I find that I'm running the seventh series um, so I found myself um, a lot useful the other realization is that if there wasn't COVID chances are that I will have I, I will have had at least three trips overseas um, to go and attend to some things and I find that there's nothing that I was going to attend to before that I'm not attending to now and I haven't left my my, my space. So rationality is coming in, in a manner that it is not possible for me to live the way I used to live before post-COVID. Um, and I'm getting used to my own uh, uh, new normal and I'm, I'm loving it. So if I may ask, sir, on the poll you ran on Twitter, was there something that was consistent in, or the question you asked rather, was there something that was consistent in what people said that they would do? Maybe in terms of were, were they personal, personal? Um, it, it, it was less of asking them questions. It was, it was more of asking them to ask themselves the mm -hmm. question mm -hmm. and answer it. What mm -hmm. is it? What is the one thing that you will, you will And that was at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's time to go back to them to say, okay, it's now three months. Mm -hmm. um, what are the new ideas that you have come up with? And I will share my own new ideas with them as well so that they can see uh, uh, what I mean. And it's not over yet. So even for people who haven't embarked on that journey of identifying the one thing that they will be able to show for this period, you can start now. The best time to plant a tree was a hundred years ago. The next best time is now. So you can, you can begin so that you can like uh, Benga has reeled out uh, some of the things that they've achieved, you too can reel out. And those things don't have, that's why I was, they don't have to be business, yes. they can be self, mm. uh, they can be family, they mm. can be friends, they can be mm. community, mm. Um, towards a better society at all times. That, right. that, that's my answer. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you. So Benga, I'm going to ask you, based on that, what habits or new habits or um, or behaviors um, that are non-work related, at least for now, that you think you've also built up or adapted over the last few months that you probably were not doing before, or maybe you were doing it by a different degree? Well, I can answer for him from just <laughs> looking at him. I find that his beard has grown. Um, uh, and I think it goes both ways. Has, well, my own, my own, I never wore beard, any beard at all. So mm. I decided to grow one as part <laughs> of the changes. But bring mm. that go on. Don't let me. Know. That that's very correct, sir. Um, <laughs> my beard has grown. Um, mm -hmm. um, yeah, but other things I think um, I've picked up has been um, learning to delegate more. Right. Mm. Um, it's it's quite interesting how COVID became the driving force behind that for me. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, now I, don't, I can't get on a plane and fly somewhere to solve a problem. I have to trust the people responsible to solve that problem. And that's been great. Um, like I said earlier, people, uh, people I've thought of with have been they're the best folks ever. So that's really helped, helped tremendously. Another habit I guess I've picked up at uh, this period has been um, spending more time with family. Um, mm. That also helped, uh, which prior to now was wasn't that um available mm -hmm. um yeah so those two things for me have been very big and also getting to you know understand be go beyond the work with my team right mm -hmm. uh beyond the work the mental health um of folks in in, in the organization has also been very important to me uh, mm -hmm. part of what we've done uh, part of what we used to have a behavioral coach work with us okay. to have um give people avenue to um you know be able to talk to people Express. to someone mm -hmm. If they, if they need that. And that's also really helped us, yeah. Okay, so I, I want to delve into that a bit more. During the live, during the interview that we had, one of the conversations that came up a lot was on culture. And um, you had asked Mr. Diola a question around how do you build a culture, but that, how do you also allow a culture to permit? Do you find that with remote working now, and I'm asking you because you're, you're even, uh, you're in the space where you probably were already doing some form of remote working before the crisis. 
And so it was probably slightly easier for you to adapt than some other businesses that are non-tech. So you may have had some of your employees who, were, who did not necessarily have to be in the office or you were even in different locations. What have you found out to be some of the key cultural changes, if any, within, the, within Flutterwave at the moment? And how have you how have you allowed that to evolve in terms of also managing people remotely? So prior to now, we have a couple of folks um, in the company who are who preferred working remotely. And they used to be the, the outliers, the folks that, hey, are you really doing your work? Stuff like that. Um, but, but when COVID struck, they became the work from home experts, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is very interesting. And we were also able to adapt quickly. What, what I find very interesting has been um, the, the fact that a lot of folks um, in the organization, um, we all have to, um, there's no manual for this. We were not ready for this. We didn't, we didn't plan for this. So everybody had to pretty much adapt. And what, what we've tried to do is to let the team leaders understand that, hey, it's a new wave and we all have to give our people the, the space to acclimatize to this new normal and be able to obviously um, adapt that different you know, uh, environment. You have the parents in the team having mm -hmm. issues with juggling kids okay. and work mm -hmm. and kids getting on Zoom calls became the new norm, which is fine, <laughs> you know? And so we're, we're basically trying to adapt to what we're saying. And every, each day, each week, you know, we're just um, trying to get that out there. Last, and um, we do weekly town halls um, at Florida Wave. And uh, last week, we had a trivia game. We were the first time we had that. And that's an example of just trying to create fun in this um, new normal, right, that we are in. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Adiola, um, I'm, I'm going to ask you two questions in one. Um, when you were running the bank, um, w w was there a time where you would compare maybe a similar type of crisis? I know people keep saying that there's, there's never really been, even when we had all the different economic crises and recessions and all of that, uh, there's, that this, is, this also supersedes all of them. But was there a time where you had to lead, um, um, lead, lead the team at the time that you were leading the team at GT Bank during the crisis moment? And, and if yes, uh, and, uh, what are some of the learnings that you think are very important for entrepreneurs who are leading teams and leading businesses um, at this time? Okay, let me be clear. Mm -hmm. I've, I've never seen anything that equates mm -hmm. or that has equated what we have now. Mm -hmm. um, not, not only in terms of its effect on businesses, um, but it's, it's, it's unending. Mm. Nobody can predict how long is, we're going to live with it. So um, business managers are going to have to ask themselves, am I putting in place a temporary structure or am I putting in place a permanent so structure or something in between? It, it, it's constantly challenging. In terms of crisis, I'm a proponent of if you are running an organization and um, everything is peaceful and things are just going well and you are able to predict things and meet them there, I think you need to create a crisis in that organization uh, because crises bring a lot of thinking to the, to the table. And like you said, new products come out of, um, uh, uh, of, of those things. Yes. Um, particularly as a very new bank, when you are in the ca categorized negatively, new generation bank, new generation bank, as if they're just all going to collapse overnight. And you know what? Most of them collapsed. Mm. Most of them collapsed. So how do you single yourself uh, or prepare yourself such that when, those, uh, when the epidemic came that kept afflicting them and they were dying, how did you um, uh, boost your own immune system? Uh, what were your vitamin Ds? What, what were those things? And my, my singular, uh, 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 my answer is that we were faithful 
to what we're doing. We were not um, telling people, this is what you must do. And we were doing something different. No, all the rules were for everybody. Like I said, memos were written to all of us. Okay, if we are not going to have a staff pack in here, the managing director was a staff. So when we had the first challenge that scared us um, when I ran the bank was the um, the the uh, financial services failure uh, under Abacha, mm -hmm. and I mean finance companies were just collapsing. We were the leader in the entire industry, banking, um, non-bank financial institutions. We we had a a desk for it, uh, led by Okoye Miagbaje, who is now in Oku State, was the head of FI. And checks were bouncing left, right, and center. And we had this meeting to decide whether we should exit that particular product immediately because they were dying. Um, very, very interesting meeting. The desk officers felt, you know what, let's get out of it before they uh, um, affect us. But what helped us to a, a, a decision eventually was to ask the question, who are we? Who are we? Did we go to them just for the good time or we went to them because we wanted to build uh, something? So what did we do? We, put, we came up with an amount. And at that time, this was huge, 150 million uh, 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 Naira that we will continue to take the heat, right? Until we had exhausted 150 million Naira. If at the end of 150 million Naira heat was still coming, then maybe we, yeah. we've done our best. Okay. Um, I want to say to you that I don't think we hit 60 million Naira on that journey before things reversed. And because we showed so much support for the members of that subsector of our industry, um, that part of our business just grew, uh, 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 capacitated us. And part of the reason we're able to um, overcome the pandemic, uh, if I can use the word, and that time afflicting mm -hmm. banks uh, uh, of our generation. So where I'm going is that you need to ask yourself who you are, mm. um, what are your values, mm. and whether the, the, the decision is business or personal, mm. at the end of the day, it is who you are that will decide. Um, if you want to touch and go, that will be your decision. If you want to be faithful to your values, and those values are not things that are good to say, but also good to do, to then it will show in the outcome of, of your decision. Um, that is one, one major phase of our, of our existence. Uh, but nothing, nothing, nothing like that. Uh, yeah. uh, uh, COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, I think what really resonates with me is that regardless of whatever the situation is, that core, staying to your core, staying to the values and the essence of what drives, what drives your business. Absolutely. Um, one of the other questions I also wanted to ask, given the financial services space, and being, I'll start with you, is uh, the initial conversations focused also talked a lot around the regulatory space. And there was something Mr. Diola had said around that regulation is supposed to help both the business and even the space also to thrive as best as it is. Um, over the last four or five months, and I think that's also lends credence to, to the Flutter Wave store, which we'll also talk about soon, is that um, there have been a lot more virtual transactions. So payments, most people, now that people, a lot of people don't even want to add um, to, to handle cash. So there's a lot of e-payments, e-transactions, and when a lot of businesses closed shops, um, people needed to sell their services and goods and we're doing that virtually. Do you, what do you think, um, what's your perspective of the regulatory space as it is, particularly for your business? And what are some of the things that you would like to see um, that protects you as a business, but obviously also protects the customers and the consumers too, who are now also maybe probably more trusting as they would be, be of that? So I think um, from a regulatory perspective, I think the Central Bank of Nigeria has been fantastic uh, okay. in their regulatory framework. Mm -hmm. um, for example, a regulation came out um, a couple of weeks ago regarding 
changing the response time for service um, for refunds to 24 hours mm -hmm. instead of um, the usual three to four, five days, right? That's, that's mm -hmm. fantastic in this mm -hmm. period. Mm -hmm. I think um, such innovation from Central Bank helps to um, create a path for mm -hmm. folks like us to also mm -hmm. innovate on what, they are, on what they are trying to do. So we've seen that leadership from Central Bank trying mm -hmm. to define how the customer is protected, the payment system is well regulated, and also ensuring that every stakeholder is well protected. And that's great. Uh, for my view, uh, I also believe that the, the direction of by which the, the central bank is going, um, in, particularly with payments in Nigeria, has been very um, amazing, right? Mm. Um, for example, I mean, across, I've had the opportunity to work across a couple of countries. And I've seen the difference between how central banks react and to how they react in, 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 in CBN mm -hmm. compared to everywhere else. I've seen that mm -hmm. firsthand. It's been really, really fantastic. And what, one thing that I also saw that is very commendable has always been the, the willingness to be open to new innovation. Um, that is really amazing. And plus the um, sandbox plan from the central bank to allow new innovation to thrive in the ecosystem, thrive safely. And that has also been uh, uh, pretty great. So for me, I, I think more of this should, should, should come, right? Mm -hmm. This should be, it should continue um, in this light. Yeah. Okay, fantastic, thank you. So I'm going to start taking a couple, we have a couple of questions already coming up. Um, and I think this is a question that had been touched slightly during the interview, but I'll, I'll switch it a bit. So there's a question from Aramide Abe from YouTube. And her question is around, well, knowing what you, is there anything you would change? So now, given this kind of, you say, black swan and whatever scenario, is there anything you will change? And I think I'll ask you, Benga, because you're still fully on your entrepreneurship journey, that you will change now with hindsight. Uh, because one of the initial things that we said is that people are more reflective now. People are, they're more deliberate decisions about how I live, how I relate with people, family, and all of that. So um, knowing what you know now and with the situation at hand, is there anything that you change on your entrepreneurial journey or as, as, you, as, you, as you lead and run a business? Um, so I, I mean, from my own view, COVID is just a blip um, on, the, on the path, right? Um, Staying true to the path is very important for me and for uh, followers as well. We're, we're staying true to our path. That's very critical to us at, the, at this moment. One other thing that I think uh, would change is the way we, um, like Mr. Dola said, crisis creates opportunities, crisis creates new innovation, and we have to be willing to embrace them. Uh, we've seen um, you know, new leaders rise even in our, in, in our organization. Mm -hmm. you know, people who are, willing, who are willing to embrace this new crisis and look for how do we stay on top? How do we ensure that we serve our client? How do we ensure that we make service a, an advantage for us a far away? That's those mm -hmm. things are basically what we will continue to do. So um, the changes that will happen with just the, how we approach situations, we're no more thinking our five-year plan will stay a five-year plan, right? You know, we don't, we're no more imagining that things will be cast in stone, right? Mm -hmm. We're willing to adapt as required based on the scenario we find ourselves in as a company. And that has been one of the cardinal stones that we use to try our thought with. Mm -hmm. Our core values, which we've defined even before the pandemic, still, still stay true to what we're trying to do. We're not trying to change that. Mm -hmm. However, how we implement them will change based on the realities of our environment. Thank you. So, Ms. Diol, I wanted to ask this question, which is also a question around um, building teams in a crisis. That is that the uh, Aramidia based question? No, no, is that the so, one? Yeah, so that's our. Okay. So if, you, if you still like to address that, that's, that's also fine. I, I, I think yes, so. Please. I think please so. Please mm -hmm. um, it's, it's based on the, on the concept of if I knew then what I know I now, now. Mm -hmm. okay? And I always try to urge people to leave that platform. It doesn't exist. You did not know then what you know now. Rather, let them shift the paradigm, the, pers the, the perspective to, with what I know now, what will I do? Because every phase of your life, you can always ask if I knew then what I know now. You didn't. There's also an advantage of not knowing 
Ben, ben what, what you know you? now, because you are able to take those risks in such a manner. I'll give you an example. One day I drove from, there used to be toll gates on Lagos Ibadu Expressway, yes. mm -hmm. right? Um, I, and I used to come to, I was an auditor learning, learning my trade and I was working in Ibadu. And at some point in the course of my work, I saw in the newspaper that there was going to be a lecture at the Institute of International Affairs, mm -hmm. all right? And um, a gentleman, Jajawa Chuku, yes. was mm -hmm. going to deliver the lecture. He was foreign minister for minister Nigeria. For yes. mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd attended a primary school, St. Paul School Breadfruit in Lagos. And I used to, as a young boy, see the plaque. He declared that school open, open by the Jajawa Chuku. So I said, I have to see this Jajawa Chuku today. And I left Ibadan. The lecture was going to start at 4.30. I left Ibadan at three o'clock, right? In my pass at alone. And I hit the expressway. I did toll gate to toll gate in 42 minutes. Okay. Um, I didn't like the lecture ultimately. I had a flat tire on the expressway. <laughs> I went through so much, but I got to NIA on the dot of 4.30, only for me not to enjoy uh, uh, the, the lecture. lecture. But yeah, so if I knew then what I know now, I was not going to leave it now. Okay, but the reason why Benga set up his business is because he didn't know then what he knows now, right? People will tell you as they get older that only mad people set up businesses. Okay, so was he mad? Was I mad? <laughs> was Mr. Peter Said mad? Were all these people, were they mad? But then if they were mad, we needed them because we needed those businesses to be set up. As they are getting cured of their madness, let them exit the businesses so that other mad people can take over and drive these businesses to go. So Aramide, um, mm. when I look back now and I say to myself, with what I know now, I probably won't have created the organization that I created at, 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 at that time. So I don't, I don't find it useful. Okay. I, I like to know what I know now, yeah. but it's only to oh. inform my decision, decision or what I do next. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So the question I was now going to ask was, how do you, so speaking now on people, how do you build, somebody asked, how do you build leadership in crisis? How do you identify and build leadership in crisis uh, within an organization, regardless of the size? Um, there was an additional addendum to say that um, the, the person as an entrepreneur feels that he is not the one just always doing the work and the team members do not uh, do not understand the the seriousness of the scenario. So, <laughs> so what what advice how do we would go? you give that person? Yes. How okay. do you, how do how do you identify and build leaders within your team in a crisis, particularly for a business for for an owner manager? Okay, we we'll go to our rules. Venga. In in, in this case, uh, you should go first. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. I take that as an instruction and I will obey. Mm. Um, there is no difference between building leadership mm. in a time of crisis and at any other time. What we need to do, what, what the most important aspect of that particular aspect of this discourse is having hired the right people, mm. having trained them to understand their job, um, having shared the moral compass of the corporation, what we call the values, I think we need to let people do their job, okay? And if we, to the extent that, okay, I'm a parent, but Mrs. Adeyemi is also a parent, right? I guess Wenga is, or maybe you're a parent as well. Yes. I cannot ask you to, I cannot want to know how you are handling your children. You are doing so. Every individual can deliver, right? Once we subscribe to the same, once, once we share uh, uh, the same ideals mm. and our communication is clear. So whether it's in crisis or it's not in crisis, allow, get away, get, get out of the way, right? So that people can do what they are employed to do mm -hmm. and get evaluated on yes, that right. basis. Mm -hmm. It is only by doing that they get better. 
because they get reviews, they themselves will seek uh, uh, um, advice, even outside the organization, because they want to succeed. Um, that is the only way to build leadership in people. Otherwise, uh, you will assume that you are the only one that can do everything, everything. or unless those things are done the way you will do them. Also That's learn to enjoy, it. right? Learn to differentiate. I use ice cream as my example. There's chocolate ice cream, there's vanilla ice cream, there's strawberry ice cream, cookies and cream. The fact that somebody didn't do it with the flavor that you will have done it with doesn't mean that it is, it is not ice cream. It is just vanilla when you are using, uh, uh, producing strawberry. Allow people, just get out of there. Lead, leading is actually getting people to execute uh, that which they want to do, creating a conducive atmosphere, training and showing them, having clarity of communication. This is what we want to do. What did you understand that I have said? This is what we want to do. Okay, what do you understand? Once you are clear that you are on the same page, let the person go and do it. And we will follow that person. So ultimately, it's about trust. It's about trust in the people, right? Individually and collectively uh, to be able to deliver on that which we have agreed. Um, and it will vary initially, but over time, we will learn to trust ourselves more. Uh, people will get better at delivering what they do. And for as long as we all accept that what we asked of them is what they have delivered and we commend them, it gives added confidence uh, uh, to them to be able to do it. I don't know whether your experience, Benga, is different Benga, in your organization. You. Mm -hmm. um, you're, sp you're spot on, sir. So I have the same perspective. Um, I believe you cannot... My my exam my favorite example is the Formula One um, race, right? Okay. The, the the teamwork is required to get stuff done, and everybody needs to understand exactly what they need what to they do need. to get it done properly. And you know, my another example I like to use is I I, I would say if you give somebody a, a a goal to to do something in London, you don't you allow them to choose a flight they will fly. You allow them to choose a airplane, choose the time to fly. Once they understand the goal of going there and they understand what you're trying to achieve when you get there. And that for me is also the same approach I have. Um, you know, it's it's really um, it's important for um, founders and CEOs to learn to step back and be able to take that um, ringside view, right? And allow the executors in your company to execute properly. And when that happens, naturally there is a greater chance of success because uh, when the support is there from an executive perspective everything basically works well and also understanding the fact that people will make mistakes sometimes mm -hmm. and there should be room for that because you can't innovate without making mistakes right so there should be room for um, people to make mistakes and be able to you know recover mm -hmm. and understanding that this is not the way to go and be able to guide and constructively um, mm -hmm. guide the team so that's that's my view Fantastic. Thank you. So still staying with you. Earlier on, you said that one of the things that you've developed uh, in the last three, four months is the Flutter Wave store. Why did you, why, why, how did the idea start? Was this something that had already been in the pipeline and then the scenario just became perfect for it? Or it was something that evolved? And then what, what is the Flutter Wave store and how does it help you? You mentioned earlier on that it helps smaller businesses. How does it help small businesses? So the origin of that product really is very interesting. Uh, okay, it was a, a, a bunch of conversation between folks in my team, my head of marketing, um, customer experience, design, had different convos with me about the same thing. It was, was, was very funny, right? Everybody was saying, hi, GB, we think we can adapt a particular feature we have on our product to do X, Y, Z. I was like, oh, great. Then the next day, the other guy also said the same thing. So we then saw that, okay, we all have the same ideas, right? Mm -hmm. And we brought it all together and decided to go build our product. And the entire company came together from our growth team to engineering, to design, to product, to customer experience, to compliance. We had to change the way we were doing stuff to make that product work. For example, we saw that we couldn't allow, it. previously when a merchant signs up after a wave, we go through a compliance process, which is required. Mm -hmm. 
However, when a merchant who needs a store signs up, what do we do? Uh, we have to change the way we approach compliance mm -hmm. for this pandemic period. So we have to reinvent a lot of things um, to be able to make that product a success. Um, at this time, it, it's been great. The adoption has been really impressive. We've had a lot of merchants, almost 3,000, I think, have signed up to use the product, and a lot of them have created stores. They are selling online, and it's really, it's really mind-boggling. It's really also humbling that you know we were able to build something that is really impacting people that that much, and that the impact side is really amazing for us. We find a lot of joy in that on that product across the organization. Is so any of the products that excite you? So tell us one of the any of the products that maybe or the stories because you're saying joy. So I, I feel that there's a bit more personal touch to some of those. Yeah, this, this, the, the stock yeah. product is, is very personal for me, mm -hmm. uh, also for people in the company. We had uh, there was a particular story about someone whose parents were selling um, um, eggs, and okay. due to the pandemic, they couldn't get it done. And the mm -hmm. stock product made them sell at that period. Those stories are tiny, but they are very significant. It helps us to hand call to why we're doing what we're doing in photo wave and the fact that we're making an impact on the small merchant we set out to do. Mm -hmm. So that for us is very, very pivotal and very important. Um, beyond that, the stock product is really great because of the fact that beyond even the pandemic, right, it takes away the need for a small merchant, for any anyone actually, mm -hmm. to get online and start selling. It's combining products, logistics, commerce in one, right? We even integrated delivery infrastructure um, with a partner to ensure that if you're selling and you're selling a, del a delivery um, required kind of product, you can get um, our delivery company to help you pick up and deliver to your customer. And that is a, a part of what we believe is the response we give to COVID-19 and further wave. And, you know, and this happened when we were all remote, there was no physical meeting, there was no, you know, phone call, it was just all working together to build something. And that for me was very, very important. Yeah. That's impressive. Well done, well done. Mr. Well Dela, has there been any innovation that you've seen over the last two, three months or any business ideas that have, that have interested you or you found exciting? Um... Well, I've just listened to, to some that uh, Binga has uh, listed, and I find them exciting. But let me, let me give you an, um, an idea of what somebody said to me. There's a friend of mine that loves eating, you know, puff, puff. Mm -hmm. All right. And there was this company that every Monday, they will fry very hot puff, puff, right, and have it delivered. To this my friend they deliver to other customers as well i mean i thought that was that was fantastic and you'll still they be hot then, when it gets to the to the customer to him but no yeah. that's not that's not uh all they they'll give him one week supply of puff puff so a portion will be still be hot the rest will not will be he has to put in the fridge or freezer so that i can bring them out every day to heat up by himself now, should he run out of puff puff by Friday? They gave him the uh, ingredients already mixed, right? So that on Saturday, on Sunday, when they are not at work, he can fry some puff puff by himself. Now, I've used that example. People wonder, okay, I'll, but that is a a a um, a company that is focused on satisfying and meeting the needs. Of, of, of their customer, as far as I'm concerned. I mean, I don't eat the, I don't eat the puff puff. But in the entire space, all through, so many things have happened. Since the first lockdown, I have not had any of my drivers come to my come to work at all. So, um, and we've done everything that we wanted to do. Uh, so we've kicked in other people. There's nothing we wanted to. We've, we we'll lo love to buy that cannot be brought to yeah, us. Mm -hmm. There's no payment we want to make that the lack okay. of uh, likes of Benga have not uh, made possible for us. So I can find so many ways in which people are, are innovating. Mm -hmm. um, and, and there are innovations, even if we say this is just another way of solving uh, the problem that you have. What, 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 what else is 
uh, innovation. So the last three months in Lagos where I live has been, I mean, we've executed projects and we've remained at home and um, uh, we've delivered 50 bed uh, isolation center here, uh, 20 bed isolation center there. Um, those are things that if we were not, if, we, if, we, if it was not for COVID, we'll probably be running up and down trying to do them by ourselves. So getting things, the, 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 the word I want to leave with people uh, today is to be mindful of their most important role. The leader's role is to ensure execution, to ensure that things are executed, ideas are executed. Um, in, in, not necessarily by himself or herself, but everything, every idea that we're able to execute takes us forward. Um, it is forgetting that our role is, ensure, is to ensure execution. That is the bane of, um, of what they call bad leadership and, 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 and so on and so forth. So what he's been able to do in his organization, what the pop off lady has been able to do, what you and I have been able to do in the course of this um, uh, uh, three months so far is that every idea that we've discussed, we haven't left them at the level of discussion. We've gone through clarity. We've gone through uh, what do we need to see it executed? Who do we need to see it executed? How long do we need to have it executed? Who are the other people that we need to work with to have it executed? How do we extend, uh, 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 share our values with them uh, so that they can know how we like things executed and then those things get executed by constant um, follow-up. That, 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 that is what we do. Thank you. Thank you very much. There's another question from Samuel Adebo Aleso Benga by the rule of this conversation. You're, you're, you're taking it first. How can I build a sustainable structure as a budding entrepreneur? And what are the things I need to put in place in the, to start up the business or in the startup business? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, I'll try. So um, I think... Um, you know what, what, what Mr. Della said earlier applies here in the fact the fact that you, you do not know the future, right? Mm. So you have to, which is great because not knowing the future sometimes helps. It helps to just restrict your focus to the moment and be able to just get started. Mm. So I think the first thing is to just start, right? That's what mm. I would say. Then build the structures as they come. Um, we have a, a way where. We, we don't believe that you can create a policy for what you do not even anticipate yet, right? However, the basic stru structure should be created in the, in the sense that structures are around governance, uh, governance around um, people. But it would be crazy for me to say, as a young budding startup, you should go and get a CFO. You're not even sure if you're going to exist in the next two years, right? However, I put a structure there so it can scale as required, right? Um, yeah, so I, I would say if it's, a tech, if it's a tech startup, you should have a technology um, a technology co-founder or, you know, and then a business focus one and match both together to start. But I think the biggest thing is to just start and then as the business grows, building the right framework and of course have your advisory board, have folks you can, who can call you to order when required. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Adela, there's a question for you from Mr. Kim, from Akim Ajilero. Um, what is your take on a foreign on, for, on a foreign investor and local investor in the Embraer state of funding for a startup? So I, I guess that is maybe if I can paraphrase that. What's your take on investment in the early stage of funding for a startup? Okay, which one do you want me to answer? Your own or his own? Well, his own. So in his own words. <laughs> uh, his own is clear. I have no, no take. Okay, but so if we flip it, um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> if we flip it so that for those who are asking questions around how do you finance, how do you look around exploring and taking financing when you're starting the business, what are the factors to consider? The, the, it's always the 101, mm. although people don't believe it. Um, 
a third party is finds it easy to invest in your company mm. when a second party and the first party mm. has shown that they have invested themselves, right? And it's not the amount of money that they have invested. Mm. It's the time they have invested, it's the product they're bringing and the little money that they have, right? And uh, demonstrate that they understand the space they want to play in. You know, there's this rule that the only person that you deal with when it comes to gold is somebody who knows gold, okay? If you go and trade in gold and it's a carpenter that is leading you, um, you, find, you, you have yourself to blame because he doesn't know gold. Yeah. People who know gold deal in gold. Uh, people who know different businesses at a start of dealing those businesses. So you, you, when those things are in place, uh, and you, you, you may not get all the money that you want on day one. It, it's not like um, you take a bank that requires $200 uh, uh, million dollars to set up. And um, yeah, that's not the day they will become a trillion naira uh, organization. Mm -hmm. There's always... The reason we're able to tell stories is that we were once small and then we grew and then we grew more and then we get to a point where, mm -hmm. uh, but we continue to grow. Mm -hmm. The same way uh, uh, my partner on this platform is speaking on day one, he will have put all he had, he will have uh, all the ideas uh, before we start getting into um, foreign investor, local investor. Mm -hmm there is something that we need to show mm. and then third parties will come. And that uh, can also be at the point of idea if the idea is powerful and is presented in a manner that mm. shows clarity of thought, mm. clarity of mind. Mm. And you find people uh, who want to invest, they normally will invest with you. Mm. Thank you. So there's something being, um, when I said about uh, governance mm -hmm. that I want to ask you, what is the yes. role of a board? during a crisis and uh, um, or, or maybe let me flip mm. it this way um, and we can choose to answer it because I want to answer it from the I want so what does the CEO expect from the board during a crisis but also what does the board also expect from the CEO and how can they work together collaboratively uh, to 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 ship or to champion the to steer the business uh, through this time starting with you Mr. Jella please Okay, the, um, what the board expects from the CEO is a very, very clear and thought through uh, uh, process. This is, what, this is what we are faced with and this is what, how we are handling it. These are the things that we would like our staff to do. We are going to uh, uh, open one up out of every five branches and so on and so forth, and carry that board along um, with only one purpose in mind, to get them to believe that mm. they are doing all that they need to do, right, for the, for, for, for the organization, uh, to protect the human talent in that organization, to protect the physical assets of that organization, and to protect the future of that organization. That, that is the role of the board. And the duty of the managing director and his management or her management mm -hmm. is to work all these things out, not in a, a manner of, uh, we're doing every, we're trying our best. We're doing everything that we can. No, 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 no. I should be able to stay here and say to myself, everybody that gets to flutter wave, right, will have their temperature tested, all right? Everybody that gets to flutter wave, after the temperature has been tested, will be recorded. The name will be recorded and will give them somewhere to wash their hands before they go in, right? Because we have a construction behind, we have provided X number of helmets. It is in that, in such detail that they present it to their board. The board then will say to them, given the experiences of different board members, ah, there's a step missing here. Oh, okay, we considered it but we didn't think that in our own situation, it will work. Or thank you, we omitted it, we put it there. And thereafter, there's a document, an SOP, 
that is common to all of us. This is what we do. This is what is going to cost us. We need your approval as a board. That board approves it. And once there is, a, 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 we report periodically to that same board. Uh, we, we run into, they must be able to say, can we see your temperature schedule? Say, ah, what happened to this guy with 38 degrees? We didn't let him, we didn't let him in. But not only that, we referred him straight to the isolation center. That's all the board wants. Mm -hmm. But it's the duty of management to plan around the organization in, in granular details in a pandemic and advise its board. That is my recommendation. That's my expectation. So as chairman of a few boards, I've called up my CEO say, this is what we have. What are we doing? And I mean, they've, they've, they've responded like that. Mm -hmm. Benga, over to you. Um, I think Mr. Dela said it all, if you, if you ask me, right? It's the same expectation that I also have, right? The board role is um, to do just that and to basically direct and uh, provide guidance and advisory capacity for management. Well, management will go into details, right? Into the day-to-day -day of the organization and ensuring that all the uh, goals are being met. Uh, more importantly, to make sure that the the, le the, le the level of um, um, response required for any pandemic or whatever situation that is arising can be dealt with. Yeah. Fantastic, thank you. So we're, we're rounding up now. So two, two last questions and one to, to each, each of us. So for, for Gwenga, somebody wants to work with younger people in the demographic of about 20 to 30 people. And I'm assuming that you probably have a larger younger demographic in that, in that, uh, in your team. How do you work with young people? How do you get the best out of them? Um, I would say young people are not different from every other kind of people, <laughs> right? So it's the same <laughs> approach that- Are you a young uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> The same approach that um, has been said on this call. On this call. Um, it is, you know, as a leader, as a CEO, communicate vision with detailed clarity, right? Get out of the way for the, for your folks and do their job. It's the same thing across the board. So, um, you know, when that is done and the support is, is created to, to provide that value, you see people bring in their passion, their innovation, their own individuality that, that makes them creative, right? Across yeah. board. Thank you. And then final question, Mr. Diola, for you. Um, in identifying mm -hmm. partnerships, so there's a question here around partnerships, and one of the things that we mm -hmm. that has been a common thread along amongst the both of yourself is that we can't do things by our own. Even when you have ideas, whether within the organization or outside of the organization, you lean other people, you lean to other people to make it work. And the question is around how do you identify partnerships that have shared values, shared vision as yourself? What are one or two of the fundamental things to to identify um, like-minded partnerships? Um, okay, we, we tend to believe that until people share uh, beliefs with us, we, we cannot relate with them. We can, mm -hmm. we can. Uh, but we need to put that, we, we need to have an understanding that the way they look at things, right, mm -hmm. is different from the way we look at things. For example, um, where... Uh, if, if it's a life and death issue, and this is the person that is going to help you, right? The father, he or she doesn't share your value does not mean you should die, okay? Uh, uh, that becomes folly. The most important thing is for you to be steeped, S-T-E-E-P-E-D, -E -E mm -hmm. in your own belief, mm -hmm. in your own belief. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that you suspect that those other beliefs are not just different, but opposing, if you have alternatives, right, in, in, in such partnership, whose beliefs are closer to yours, it is easier, much, much easier. If you don't have alternatives, there, because we are discussing business now, there's something called an agreement, all right? Make sure that you have a kosher agreement where things are clear, uh, duties, responsibilities, uh, what time do you, uh, must you pay? What do we mean by that time? Um, 
Hello? What yes. do you mean by that time? So that somebody doesn't say to you three o'clock, oh, we are talking about daily time um, and not New York time. You don't want somebody to scam you. Be clear, be clear when you are in a space that is a strange place, uh, 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 place to you. There was a question that Benga tried to answer. Let me just also, because I felt I wanted to touch on them, on that particular one. How do you build a structure and so on and so forth? The question I always ask everybody that is on, embarking on this journey is, how long do you want your company, for how long do you want to last? Yeah. Right? If you want your company to last for five years or, or 10 years, all these things that we are talking about, believe me, is big grammar. You don't need them. Um, it's like a baby born today, put by the roadside, they survive. Uh, they still find them in two weeks. Um, no food, nothing. Alive. All right then. So your company will will do well. I mean, will stay alive, not do well. Stay alive for some time. It is those who want to build institutions that will last long, possibly last longer than the life of those who put them together. Okay. Those who want to build the Coca-Colas of this world that keep talking about structures, governance, and all those things, checks and balances, like Binga said. Those who just want to uh, do a contract uh, because their friend is now the governor and over a four-year period, when he's no longer the governor, it's okay. They don't need to do, to do all these things. Doing all these things, you won't even have time to go and sit with your friend to be, to be collecting contract from him. It's those who want to do serious business, uh, uh, employ professionals, Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, get ideas to market and advance the cause of community and society mm -hmm. that all the things that we've been talking about are meant for. I just thought I should put in that caveat. Thank, Thank you very, you very much. much. Thank you very much. And that's really a perfect way to end this conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Mr. Adiola. I really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Benga, I really appreciate your time too. And on that note, we'll be formally ending our Q&A today. Uh, please join us. Benga, I also appreciate your time. <laughs> Thanks so much, sir. <laughs> yes. And thank you to everyone that has joined our live YouTube conversation. It will continue to be on the YouTube channel and we'll have another episode live uh, that will premiere live at midday and then a follow-up conversation in the afternoon. Good afternoon, everyone. Enjoy the rest of your weekend. And thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.